This tutorial specifically for Mac users, I want to talk about free image editing applications. That's uh, software you can download or uh, applications that you can use online to go and do some very simple edit manipulations to your imagery so that way you can really have some nice uh, pieces of artwork on your web pages or your blog posts. So assuming that you're in Mac and we're looking at Mac OS 10.5 here, um, you found an image that you want you can, in Apple Safari, you can simply click and drag that image to your desktop. And now you have built in what's called a preview. If you double click on it or right click on the file name and open with, you see something called Preview App. This basically allows you to preview an image in this little application. It gives you some functionality here. You can actually, if you want to go and like highlight a certain area, you click on it and you go up to the file controls and, and uh, maybe crop or flip it horizontally or rotate it. You have some ability to manipulate the image the way you want. The one thing though is you don't really get the ability to fine tune what the image horizontal and vertical pixel dimensions are. This ends up being very much by eyeball here, trying to go and manipulate what, what you want. But it still gets the job done, it's free, and it's built into the application, uh, to the operating system, so that's really nice. You could go and get a free software download. Here's a great one I like. I don't get paid to endorse this, I just like it a lot. It's called Skitch, S-K-I-T-C-H dot com. Again, it's only for the Mac. And um, they also have like an online f image storage and sharing uh, service if you want to use that for free, um, but really I just use the download application that I installed on my Mac. And basically this allows me to go and take an image, drag and drop into it, and now I can go and have some very, very basic controls around here that lets me to manipulate the image. I can go and grab the corners here and begin to, to size down what I want to see in the scene and then keeping aware of what the image pixel dimensions are, so 600 pixels, pixels wide by 184, I can actually start grabbing the edges and change that just to fine tune it to whatever it is that I want. And then I can even grab the corner edge of the palette and shrink that even further. Now that I got the right aspect ratio, I can go and start dragging that down, shrink it, or, or enlarge it to whatever is appropriate. There's also a couple of neat tools to go and overlay um, annotations on top of this. So if I wanted to go and dry, draw some ovals or you know square and rectangles to go and uh, highlight certain areas that are, are visually displayed on the, on the image, I can do that. I can even go and add some text if I thought it was appropriate, if I needed to go and and just mention what this was, and you can change the font colors and the border colors over here. And now a really extra special thing you can do is you go up into the file menu and you select what's called add shadow to image. Now you can see the palette just changed a little bit, but if you, if you notice there's a nice gray shading now all the way around the right and the lower edges of the image. And this will become very much apparent when we drag this image out, exporting it to the desktop. So let's just say, you know, I've, I've, I've finished manipulating, I've decided exactly what I want this thing to look like, how many pixels I want it to be exactly and precisely, and I've decided the file format that I want to drag this thing out to. I can simply change the file name if I, if I want to. Let's just call it this. I click on this drag me, drag it to my desktop. Now if I open this again in preview, you can see the image has been created. You can see a hint of some shadowing all along the border. It just gives it a nice extra bit of touch. And it was really fast and easy to manipulate this image. You didn't have to spend a lot of time. And if you can't afford something you know, really superior like Photoshop, it's great. Now, if you are a Photoshop user or want some more uh, capability, maybe you want to go and like have things like... Uh, um, you know, upload real photos that you want to do a little bit of retouching to. Adobe has a free service called Photoshop Express. It's at photoshop.com slash express. And here you create a login account and you can upload an image and they give you some nice 
tools and filters to, to do some more photo manipulation. But it's a lot more work and it also you know depends on your bandwidth. If you got a really high speed access then it's great. Um, if you don't then you might be a little bit more challenging. But um, definitely it's, it's a nice step and an easy solution if maybe you're not at your desk and, and uh, need to do some, some editing. Something else you could do, a piece of software that's very much like Photoshop that you can download for free. It's called GIMP. It's an open source project. You found it at gimp.org. Uh, a lot of talented developers have worked long and hard to try to build a piece of software that's very much like Photoshop, um, but it's not <laughs> Photoshop. Um, so, you know, rather than investing the hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for, you know, Photoshop and all the, the suite, suite of applications that come with that, you can actually go in and uh, download this, this version of it. Now, it's, um, it's a little rough. And but if you're familiar with Photoshop and using it before, this will definitely satisfy majority of your your basic needs for uh, image manipulation and filtering and adjusting color levels. So you know, much more advanced tool, um, but it's free, and you're not going to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, but it does take a little. It's a little challenging, and it's not exactly the same experience you had had using you know the real Photoshop. So that's it. I've given you a variety of, of suggestions here, things that you can do to go and edit your images. And feel free to um, let us know if you have any questions about it. Visit reinhardtgroup.com.